Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm just, I'm just going to share this painting with you. It's a nice scene, hopefully you can see it. Um, this is a townscape from my hometown. It's a, it's a nice scene and it's one of my favourite places um, to sort of sit. There's, there's a bit of a garden and so that's what I want to paint today. So, I hope you're all well. Hope everyone's um, doing well in this lockdown. Um, so this scene is quite interesting because this is probably one of the um, one of the first paintings I did in oils, and this is where I really learned how to paint using oils. If you see the grass on the bottom, that took me about two weeks just to do that bit of grass. Obviously. Um, I've learned since then, done quite a few more oil paintings, but that's one of the very first um, serious attempts that I did, and I was quite pleased with the result, and I think if I could change anything looking back, um, that's the first time I've actually seen that photo in a, quite some time, that piece of work, and I think I, I never had um, a liner brush, which would have helped with the trees. Um, there's no foliage on the trees. Um, so it, it would have really been useful to have a liner brush at the time. But obviously I didn't have one of those. So this painting, I'm just going to do a watercolour of the same scene from the same picture, which I found that I've kept over the years. And I just thought, why not give this um, a bit of a, a watercolour approach. So I'm, I'm going to do this painting a little bit more um, sort of realistic, sort of take a little bit more time. This actual painting, this, this video took, took me about two hours to probably paint. And so I have... Um, so I've edited the video down to, well, just over 20 minutes. Um, so I would appreciate if you do um, watch for as long as possible, if if not right to the end. Um, obviously, that would help my channel to, um, it just help out on my channel on the analytics. So it is a very nice scene. It's one of my very favourite places I used to go and sit in these gardens this is rochdale the esplanade um it's a memorial garden you can see i've just painted in the cenotaph is that what they call them the cenotaph um and this building here it's it's i just love this building it's an old um used to be the post office building it's been quite a number of years since i've been back to my hometown so i'm not sure what this building may be now probably a pound shop or something like that, I don't know. And one of the things that I have missed on this um, painting, you can actually see the outline. Just above the left-hand side of the building, you can see there's a little uh, block that, that comes up. And I did actually forget to paint this in. Now, it doesn't really matter because I believe that this building no longer... Um, exists it's been took down and they've they've had quite a bit of renovations in Rochdale town center so there's a lot of things that used to be there that aren't there now so that actual the actual building it was part of the council offices i believe um they've actually took that building down so i did forget to put it in this painting however um it is the only thing, as far as I know, that doesn't exist in this painting anymore. If you were as good to Rochdale, then that building wouldn't be there. So I don't feel too bad. Now I've uh, forgot to put it in. It was genuinely a mistake, but it's worked out fine anyway. So I'm not going to go exactly. I'm not going to exactly. Ex I'm not going to be exact and replicate the photo itself. I'm. Just going in loose and, as always, just wanted to give an overall impression of the scene. Um, I, 
I must admit, the last few videos I've done, the last few paintings that I've done for this channel, I have been probably too loose with my approach. Um, just a combination of things, but I think sometimes with the camera, you've got your tripod and the setup, it really sort of makes a difference in how you paint. And obviously, you don't want to be taking too much time if you're sort of filming. So all these things taken into consideration, um, I think that the quality of paintings that I've been doing have, uh, has not been quite what I really want. So I just thought I'd owe this to you that just to give you um, something more that I would paint like. So this, this painting, it's, it's one of my favourite scenes. It's a lovely place. I used to always go there. And um, just many happy memories. It's a nice sunny day. You can see the sky is a nice um, blue, sort of deep, um, cerulean, sort of French ultramarine blue. I've not really put anything else in it. And then you got all these nice trees in the gardens. And looking at them, I think they're probably a silver birch tree or two um, with a nice white sort of texture with a nice um, shadow on the left hand side. So the sun in this scene is coming from the right hand side and the, the far building behind the cenotaph is the actually the town hall, which is quite a, an impressive building um, to be fair. And you can see there's a, a clock um, on, I don't know whether it's just two two parts of the building or whether it goes all the way around. So there's probably, there could be four clocks on this tower. I'm not, I'm not I can't really remember. But I'm presuming there probably is each, each sort of um, side of the building. There's a clock, um, a clock face. So I just got that in. Um, just got the shape of it really so I didn't want to go into too much detail and that's not really what I want to focus on um, and there's there's a nice like I said this is there's gardens so there's nice bits of flowers and things like that which you'll see me do in the bottom of the paper but there's a nice wall and it sort of dips down and there's benches sort of in the in the middle of the garden so the level it, it goes down and it's all paved and there's actually a, a fountain um, which you can catch sort of um, working it's still a working water fountain and it's just a lovely lovely place to be so it's got all these trees all these sort of um, flowers and just a nice place to walk around. So I've got mem many, many memories of this place. Um, I don't often get to my hometown, although a lot of my family are still uh, living in Rochdale. So I do get to visit every now and then. But obviously at this current um, epidemic, it's been difficult to get to my hometown. But I do not like to visit whenever I can. So you've got all these nice sort of shadows. It's, like I said, quite a sunny day. Quite um, sunny, but I mean the trees are still bare. So I don't know what, what time of year this was, but obviously not quite summertime. Um, perhaps it was probably spring, somewhere around there. So the trees are all sort of bare and um, you can see the buildings through the trees. Um, I do I do have pictures somewhere of um, the gardens with the um, full sort of trees and in the summer. And you got actually quite nice, um, the tree in the centre of the paper, it, I think it's a cherry blossom. You got all these nice sort of um, big white pinky sort of flowers coming off it so that's quite a nice nice thing to see and then you got all these buildings in the background which i'm just covering just loosely covering the paper these are um, some of the there's a bank and there's a few bars or restaurants or whatever 
just there you can see i'm doing the roofs so loosely just covering the covering the paper just making that a little bit more interesting just filling in the the background but what i want to do in this painting is make these trees pop give them quite a nice contrast with the light on the right hand side and then i'll also be doing some cast shadows onto the uh, grass itself um so just loosely coming into the trees um you got different tones and i just love the way these silver birches um the look of these silver birches so you got these really nice sort of um white part showing through so all i'm doing is just uh painting over these trees and leaving the white paper underneath i don't think i'll be going for any opaque paint towards the end unless i do miss those highlights but uh, i think i've done well in preserving the white of the paper so you can see just things like going through and painting the building behind the trees and you got that white highlight it just helps bring those trees uh, forward and help obviously the sort of depth into the painting so the the paper i'm using is bockingford cold press and i'm actually using my windsor and newton paints and you can see i'm using my liner brush at the moment but i've been using the da vinci mop brush and my um isobay mop brush the isobay is probably the thickest sort of uh, brush that i've got as to a mop and that's what i did the sky in so it's covered quite quite well it holds plenty of water so there's no issues with um sort of large surfaces of um, area that you need to get painted and just the liner brush is is perfect for all these trees and branches and all these sort of things like i said which i didn't have when i did the oil painting so if you did notice it it looked kind of i think obvious now over these um years that i've not seen that painting for a while i just found the picture and put it on on this video so that you can see and it's quite obvious to me that um it needed thinner lines for the branches and twigs and all these sort of things that are in the scene but unfortunately i didn't have um, a liner brush at that time so um i hope you like this video i hope you like this sort of scene um drop us a comment let me know what you think um which one do you prefer do you prefer the oil painting or do you like this um, watercolor i know the um, oil painting took a lot longer to do um so it was quite it was quite interesting it was quite nice to do i did enjoy doing the oil painting um it's something that i certainly would like to have another go at knowing what i know now and obviously um, I've got a liner brush which I could use for the oils so I would probably get a better effect now um, a better painting but let me know what you think if you do prefer the oil painting or the watercolor I'm doing here so this is quite nice I've just took my camera off the tripod I'm just showing you how I'm doing the flower bed so I'm just basically just popping dots dots of color um there's lots of nice bright sort of vibrant colors which i hope to get in this um part of the scene and it just gives that nice um just gives that nice introduction to the painting as your eyes sort of look at the painting it'll probably um hopefully feed through the flowers and then to the buildings in particular the post office building the nice white building in the middle of the scene and so just just adding all these different colors you can see i'm adding a mix of of sap green um i've got the orange cad orange i've got cad red and i've mixed a bit of red with blue 
see that's the green I'm using and I've mixed some red with blue so I've got a purpley sort of colour and I think maybe I could have done this a bit better I think maybe if I added some real sort of dark colour that would have been sort of the dirt and earth in between the flowers um, I don't know but like I said it's just a, a loose impression a loose painting you can see I'm just adding in some white now with opaque uh, paint this is actually my gouache so this is quite nice to just add those if you want to add highlights then this is something that you could do with opaque paint so just going over the clock face now which I did cover over a bit with blue and so there we go and I didn't even put in the um, put in the um, what would you call it the the fingers and the sort of uh, numbers on the clock I just think it, it doesn't really need it um, I don't know maybe it does I don't know and just going over some of the trees just adding those little darker sort of tones uh, adding some more contrast to the scene just help that um, the highlights and the whites pop just a little bit more um, I always like it in watercolor when you come to the darker tones when you add the like sort of final darks it just really really helps the painting to sort of come alive so it pushes things back um, you can see you can see as you look at the trees um, the trees really do stand forward and push everything to the background which is something that I wanted to achieve let me know if you think I've achieved that and I'm just going over this tree again with some more dark so you really got to know when to stop um, you could sort of kill a painting by doing too many sort of highlights or darker tones or you just gotta sort of know when to stop I know a lot of my paintings I do quite sort of a light and I'm I'm working on that I'm gonna try and sort of have more sort of darker tones in my painting sometimes you you just sort of stop um, prematurely you, you just sort of get to a place and, and just stop painting and not necessarily the paintings finished um, maybe you've given up before it's time to stop so let me know what you think if if that's a, a problem that you have um, not knowing when to stop or stopping too early not getting the sort of darker darks in are you afraid to go dark with your tones um, maybe it's color saturation you you know you afraid to push those colors let me know what sort of things that um, that you think would help in these videos so I'm really really coming to the end now there's not really much left to do uh, maybe I could pop in some quite a lot more trees and branches but like I said I just wanted to keep this quite simple yet quite I'm doing quite a bit more sort of being a bit more accurate I suppose being a bit more taking my time um not not rushing um just trying to just do a nice painting i suppose so just adding some more branches and i think we're near enough about there and i just i love the way the windows are on this building I just love those um, arches and the sort of the panes of the window. I actually did, did, did that in pencil, if you saw that. Um, rather than messing around with the brush, sometimes you can use pencil just to get um, a clearer sort of line or mark without sort of messing things up. That's something that you could easily mess up if you want. If you And I'm just taking off the masking tape so just seeing that clean edge that nice border 
So there we have it. That was the finished painting. Hope you like it. Thanks for watching. If you are new to this channel, then please do subscribe. Uh, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.